Okay, welcome. Uh, this is Frank from Optics Warehouse again. What I'm going to talk about now and, and actually demonstrate to you is one of the uh, one of the areas that people sort of struggle with and don't really understand, and that's one of the key elements of shooting. In the military, we have the marksmanship principles, and we're going to cover these on a later occasion. But the important four elements to remember in any precision, accurate, or sniping is sights when you're aiming and your trigger control and your breathing. Today, and then particularly for the next short while, we're going to concentrate on the trigger control. So on most modern sniper rifles, we have a what's called a two-stage trigger. And in essence, when a trigger is pulled back, the, the first pressure is maintained, and then to continue putting the trigger back any further would result in a shot being fired. Now in the sniper world, we pull the trigger back, and we hold the trigger, and the sniper is on. If the sniper needs to change his position or the target changes, the sniper then becomes off and the trigger is released. Equally, if your hands are cold or it's raining or you need to change your grip, this is the technique we use. Um, but it's very important how, how this operates. When you um, pull a trigger, there are, two tri there are two methods which are commonly employed, which is yeah, un uninterrupted and you're interrupted. So on an uninterrupted trigger, basically what we're doing is we're just pulling the trigger back, 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 back until it fires. And then obviously on, in, on the interrupted, we're pulling the trigger back, getting that first pressure, controlling the breathing and then squeezing it back. Now, different people fire in different configurations. Everybody is different. In the military, they teach one way. Now, it isn't always right for a lot of people. For example, when I was in the military, I... I used to shoot in a different style to what I do now, having been exposed to civilian shooters. Um, but whichever method you need, the trigger and control are very important. In essence, what we're doing is we're basically doing this, closing the gap between the figure and the thumb. So in real term, this is what we're doing, pulling it straight back. Again, on the trigger itself, people, some people feel to the bottom of the trigger or the top, and they wrap a lot of their finger around the trigger this is good for combat shooting and for assault rifles. Really, you want to use the pad or the tip of your finger. This is what needs to be placed on the trigger. So, put this in the, in the reality. The finger is placed on the trigger in this sort of configuration. And the trigger is pulled back and held in that position. That's our first stage. And then to take it any further, we'd fire the trigger. Now, to demonstrate this, we're going to dry fire. So, I'm going to close the bolt. The weapon is clear. The first pressure is a placum back. As you can see, we're holding it there. Then we'd concentrate on the breathing. And in, in this case, a very quick introduction to breathing. We're going to breathe in, breathe out. And then we're going to release three quarters of the oxygen out of our lungs and then squeeze the trigger. Watch. And you see the weapon hasn't moved at all. And all I did in that instant was just took up the slack and then squeezed it. So I did an, uh, an interrupted trigger pull. Okay, what we're going to do on that, we're going to move on now and we're going to put some uh, live subsonic ammunition in and you'll see how that all comes together. Okay, so I'm feeling for my correct position on the trigger, taking up the slack. I'm going to breathe in, breathe out, and then release a shot. And I'm not going to wait too long. Okay, let's see that again. Taking up the slack. I'm going to breathe in, breathe out, and then I'm going to squeeze a shot. Let's see that all together. Okay. So, the key element there is the control of the trigger. So, like a rugby scrum. If you've ever done any of these, it's, it's that squeeze, 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 squeeze. 
So we're squeezing the two together with a combination of the breathing, the breathing and the exhaling and, the, and then pulling the trigger. This gives a nice, comfortable, fine position. The weapon itself, as you can see, has got a bipod and it's sitting on a rear monopod. So it's nice and steady. It's not going to move anywhere. So really, the weapon is forcing me into its shooting position rather than the, the traditional shooting position. So really, all I've got to concentrate on is the alignment, make sure the sights are correct, make sure my breathing is correct, and squeezing that trigger. The minute I fired that shot, then we do what we call the follow through, which we'll cover later on. But really, I'm maintaining the position on the target, watching whether the shot has gone, even if it's been a miss. So I'm ready to do a rapid follow up shot or indeed make a correction. And then I'm going to release the trigger and continue engagement. Okay, we do one more. This time without pausing. Here's a tip, something I learned, and it's a good thing to pass on for, uh, for shooters. Everybody at some time will lose their confidence, uh, particularly if you're firing a, a 50 caliber, for example, sitting behind it. No amount of um, dry firing, which is where you practice with no live ammunition in a rifle and practicing your trigger control. When it comes to a crunch, we're faced with this situation. So at the minute, the weapon is loaded and made ready, which means we've got a live uh, round up the chamber there so i've suddenly lost a bit of confidence on the trigger so here's a tip you can do so from the firing position we're going to apply the safety catch and we're going to have a go at working the trigger now we know that by working the trigger now we're not going to operate the weapon itself and all we're going to do is we're going to get our confidence back we're going to pull the trigger back and practice our breathing and then release and notice now I'm not flinching so this is a little tip for me something you can do of course you've got to fully be aware of the state of a weapon but this allows you if your hands are cold or you, you indeed going down the road of snatching the trigger and losing your confidence just to maintain your confidence and when you're ready, we're going to put the safety catch to fire and continue firing with our confidence back on that trigger. OK, so hope you enjoyed watching this. Don't forget to subscribe. This is Frank from Optics Warehouse.